So I am a, a huge, strong, massive proponent of pilgrimages, uh, as well as week-long work camps and things like that, because A, there's a long tradition in Christianity of pilgrimages. They've been going on almost from the beginning of uh, Christianity. Um, but I think that it is just so critical for us every so often to get away from the ordinary cares of daily life. It's so important that we just get away and go somewhere where kind of the, fo the focus is, is to try to see God in a new way. And I, I just think that, it, that pilgrimages are, are a great opportunity for that. I, I think that they're a, a chance for us to go and visit holy places. And whether it's a place where Jesus did something like rose from the dead, which was truly amazing to be there, or whether he multiplied the loaves and the fishes there or whatever. Um, those kinds of holy places, which you have the extra special privilege of visiting when you're in the Holy Land. But even to other places, you know, where the saints lived or where the saints did uh, something uh, profound in response to God. And, uh, you know, I had the, the great privilege of going to so many places of, of St. Ignatius and of St. John Bosco and, of course, of St. Francis of Assisi. And those places have a way as well um, to open up our hearts. And so, uh, so we had this pilgrimage to the Holy Land, and that's what we're going to have some reflections upon tonight. And, you know, I think part of this is we want to share with you uh, some of, of the ways in which God worked in our lives during, during that time. And I think that part of this, too, is, you know, we want to stir up maybe a little bit of a desire to come with us on our next pilgrimage, right? Uh, I think uh, I've been leading them with young people for a long, long time because I think they're so important and kind of like this idea of, of doing some with the Friends of Youth Apostles as well. So uh, those are two of the reasons why we're having this reflection tonight. So without any more uh, further ado, I believe that uh, Deacon John, is the one who's going to get us uh, started. Thank you. This actually ended up being quite a nice assignment because what happened was it prompted me to reflect on the whole experience of the pilgrimage. And I looked at it in terms of why I had done this. And the reason was simply to get to know Jesus better by going to the places he had been, seeing the scenery that he had seen, reflecting over the Gospels at the very places where these events occurred. It was a chance to get to know the Lord better. And certainly that happened in a, in a unique way. You know, St. Jerome says that the Holy Land is the fifth Gospel. And it is because it gives us a different insight uh, into our Lord's life. Um, I want to mention three specific experiences and cover them quickly, but I want to talk more about what, it, what the whole experience meant to me. Uh, certainly one of the, uh, the highlights of the trip was here. This is the tomb. It's probably the most famous um, part of the, uh, of the Holy Land is in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre where the Lord uh, rose from the dead. We had the unique privilege of celebrating Mass right on the tomb. I mean, that's incredible. And I think as we were doing it, one of the things which struck me is there's a, uh, a hardness and a coldness about the tomb, and yet it is a source of life. And I think the contrast of death and life together meant a huge amount to me. The uh, second thing I would mention, if I can find the arrow here. Ah, well, we've gone even faster. This area you may or may not recognize. These are graves. There may be 150,000 graves that are um, on the Mount of Olives. So this is right across from the Holy City. These graves are primarily Jewish. Uh, the cemetery itself is almost 3,000 years old. And the belief was and is among uh, Orthodox Jews that when the Messiah comes, he will come down this way, and he will go right through the Golden Gate. And this is tremendous. 
we believe that Jesus in his triumphal entry into Jerusalem came down this way. And even now, every year, there is a, a procession on Palm Sunday that goes, um, goes through here. It's interesting, on a somewhat humorous level, uh, the Jews that are here, that are buried here, chose this place because <clears throat> they want to be first in line at the time of the end of the world when the Messiah came. Muslims, in turn, have been burying their own dead there, and they are to then fight with the Jews as they are trying to line up to get into heaven. So we'll have to see. There is a small Christian cemetery, but of course uh, the Christians will win in the end. <laughs> <laughs> The Mount of Olives is important. Uh, it's important in the role that it played in Jesus' life. Jesus wept over Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives. The night before he died, he was in agony as he contemplated his death from the Mount of Olives. And as his disciples, particularly the three that he cared most about, James, John, and Peter, abandoned him when he most needed a friend. It's hard to not be touched by the, the experience here. Let's try another one here. Let's try this one. Uh, it's interesting, most of the churches that you find are quite old. This one is not. This is the church that was just built at Magdala. And uh, to appreciate this, you have to see, we're looking out toward the Sea of Galilee. The area right behind the altar, which is formed as a, as a boat, uh, with a pulpit at one end, etc., looks like water also. So this church is only a year old. Um, most of Jesus' life was spent right around the Sea of Galilee, a very small area. And so it's wonderful that at Magdala we commemorate many of those things. And I think what we're commemorating ma mainly, and what struck me at the Sea of Galilee, is Jesus' humanness. It's here that he called the apostles by name to follow him. It's here that he walked on the water, and you have the very touching story of, uh, of Peter saying, let me walk on the water too. And of course, Jesus takes him up on it and lets him do it, and he's fine until he realizes how he truly has, has taken a step out into the unknown, and he's afraid, and he starts to drown, and Jesus pulls him up. The, uh, the events which occurred around the Sea of Galilee are so touching to our lives. We're very fortunate in um, having a hotel in Tiberias, one of these ancient cities. We're right on the Sea of Galilee, and it was almost as though I could hear Jesus calling me by name uh, from, this, from this experience. Uh, but what's important is when you look around this area, you think, this is the way that, that Jesus saw the world. It hasn't changed much around Galilee. And so I found that to be uh, extremely meaningful. So this last slide, I, and I suspect others have chosen a similar slide, uh, reminded me of, in a sense, the main thing I had learned and experienced from this trip. And that is, Jesus is present in us. He was present very much in the group that we had with us. Whether you're looking at the times that we had... Um, Formal prayer, in terms of the liturgy, the hours, and morning prayer, and a couple times evening prayer, a reflection at the end of the day. Most importantly, as we celebrated the Mass together. Uh, you know, I look back at it, I don't think I, I ever saw anger expressed. People were incredibly thoughtful of each other. One of the most meaningful parts of this was when we fed Father Jack on what, 50th, 60th anniversary of ordination? It was far up there. Uh, and in doing that, you know, it gave us a chance to express our appreciation to him, certainly to Jonathan, for all that you did. The level of concern and care of asking people how they were getting along and helping them was tremendous. But the other thing which struck me about that somewhat impromptu get-together was the fact that people spoke from their hearts. And I think this brought out the, the absolute best in people. So I guess the great insight I had as I was thinking about the pilgrimage, this, by the way, is, of course, very meaningful. Pilgrims almost always carry the cross. And you are watching your fellow believers expressing their faith by carrying that cross. 
And I think what is most meaningful to me about this is Jesus, of course, always lives. But he lives right there in us, in our group. And so we don't have to go to Israel, although it's good to go to Israel. We experience the community that, that he founded and founded around his love. Thank you. My name is Jessica Suter, and I'm Father Jack's sister. Um, I had the opportunity to go on this trip, um, and and on, quite honestly, the reason I went was because it was Father Jack's anniversary of his his thirtieth anniversary of his ordination. <laughs> I quite remember the day he was ordained. Um, I don't know that I would have gone otherwise, and it was something I would say was always on my sort of bucket list. But I probably would have thought, oh, I'll do it another time. Um, but, uh, you know, you have a busy life, you have your work schedule, all those things. But I made it a priority because of that. Um, I would say the experience far exceeded my expectations. Um, it was life-changing. I have told everybody that I've met since then who's asked me about my trip about it. And I've told them, if you have the opportunity, you should absolutely go. It was amazing to walk in the steps of Jesus, to see all of these places that you've read about in the Bible and now be able to envision them. That was really profound for me. Um, I felt a tremendous connection, I think, with Jesus and the humanity of Jesus and the life of Jesus. I really felt a profound connection with Mary, um, Father Jack mentioned several of those things today in his homily, but, you know, ex seeing the places where she lived, where she conceived, where she lived with Joseph, and, and ex what she must have experienced living in that area with Jesus and watching him grow and, and, and become this amazing person and then suffer and die on the cross and being there amongst all of that, and then the resurrection, amazing. Um, but I want to focus on something a little bit different, so... The third person I would say I really connected with was Peter, St. Peter. And um, this picture is a place um, that is a church that was on the Sea of Galilee. Um, and it was just, just absolutely beautiful. It's called the Church of the Primacy of Peter. And it was in um, Tabga, which was um, at, you know, on the northwestern shore, I believe, of, of the Sea of Galilee. And... Um, this is the place um, in John 21, we hear about the story of the, um, Peter was out fishing with some of the disciples and they were not able to catch anything. And um, Jesus appears, this is the third appearance after his resurrection. And he says to them, we'll cast the net on the right side of the boat. And they're able to bring in, I, uh, I think, 153 fish or something along those lines. And that was sort of a miraculous catch. But at that point, they still don't quite realize that it's Jesus there. And so as they're dragging the nets in and they're coming in off of the shore, and, and um, they, they realize it's Jesus. And he's there, and he's on a rock um, that is a part, you know, part of this church. And he's preparing on a charcoal file some of this fish to feed, to feed Peter and the apostles. And it's at this time where he um, sort of questions Peter and says, you know, Peter, do you love me? And he does this three times. And, and Peter comes back affirmatively, you know, yes, Lord. And Jesus says, then, you know, feed my, feed my uh, sheep. Um, and there's three affirmations there. And those three affirmations offset these three times that Peter denied him um, the night before his, his crucifixion. So I, I, I reflected on that quite a bit um, while I was there. And um, this is that rock that's sort of extending out with the church on top of it. Um, and it was, it was beautiful this time of year. There had been rain and it, this Logo Vallejo is just gorgeous, and it was very moving, and we were able to actually have some quiet time, which was a little bit unusual because we were at a pretty fast pace on the pilgrimage to be able to just see and experience so many different things. But we had some quiet time, and so I was able to walk down on the shore here and, and go up to this rock and make a reflection. And I was really thinking about um, that experience of Peter there with Jesus and how Jesus helped them you know, in a very practical way, um, in their day-to-day -day life and necessity, 
but also how Peter was there, um, how, excuse me, how Jesus was there and gave them breakfast and how personal that must, experience must have been. But also, too, how Peter must have felt um, having that forgiveness with, with the Lord. And um, while I was there, excuse me for crying, I always cry. Um, it's yeah, joyful thing. tears. <laughs> the Peterson in me, definitely. Um, I, I had a very special intention for one of my daughters. Uh, for my own, one of my children, my daughter, um, who was going through a very important transitional time in life, and she's been struggling with a lot of different things. And and while I was here, um, I I pay, prayed very fervently and very particularly for her. Um, and I I spent time reflecting on that, and I actually even wrote um, my intercession, and, and you're able to kind of put it in the holes in these rocks, and it, it was a very beautiful experience. And then I went inside of the church. This is the interior where that rock kind of extends in, and several of us were there, and we were able to kneel and pray and, and touch this this rock. And, and again, I just had this very powerful uh, moment during the pilgrimage of prayer and intensity for her. And the interesting thing that happened was the next day, um, I, I called my daughter and I um, was checking on her. She had moved out of our home and it was a big change. And uh, I decided to call and see how it went. And she shared something with me and she said, um, Mom, you know, did something happen yesterday? And I said, oh, you know, you know, nothing in particular. I mean, obviously I'm on pilgrimage and it's been pretty amazing. And she said, oh, well, she said, I, I had this thing happen. And she said, I was, she said, she works at a daycare center and she said it was nap time and the lights were out and I was, you know, quietly having some lunch over by the window and just kind of sitting there and it was quiet. And she said, this light came through the window and she said it, um, excuse me, showed, just kind of shown in on me. And she said, I was just overcome with this level of peace that everything was going to be okay. And she said, I knew you were praying for me. And I said, oh, Ashley, you know, I was, you know, you won't believe that. I didn't. So I conveyed to her what, what had happened to me. Um, and she just said, you know, mom, I, I just, I felt it. And I thought, you know, how profound there was a absolute direct answer to my prayer and the the fact that that was happening across the world was just just pretty amazing to me and she went on to even say that um she said you know i i had been feeling a little guilty that i wasn't there that i had chosen to go on this pilgrimage while a lot of stuff was going on with her and um she said you know actually mom i think it was really good you weren't here she said because it it made me do for myself the things that you would have done for me. And I just got, wow, well, this is my daughter on the phone. This is pretty amazing. But it was a tremendous, tremendous gift. And so there were so many other things that happened on the trip and, and so many um, amazing experiences. But I, I would say that was the most personal for me. And clearly, um, that quiet time, that reflective time, and that connection, and, and that being able to visualize all of that and that experience is something I'll never forget. And it wouldn't have happened if I hadn't been on pilgrimage. So great, great experience, a great opportunity to share all of this with so many people. And um, I just can't say enough positive things about it. So thank you. Uh, so I am Jonathan Mundell. Um, I'm the director of Youth Apostles, and I also have a reflection about the primacy of Peter, but the um, amazing blessing is that everyone has different experiences at the same place. Um, so um, I'm very grateful. Uh, Jack Helmley took this picture and he asked me to take it. I would have never done it myself. Um, and, uh, but I'm very grateful he did cause I'm happy to have something to, to remember that. Um, and as Jessica said, it, it was just very, very peaceful there. Um, and you could really imagine Jesus, uh, having 
breakfast with the disciples. And while I was there, I was just reflecting on especially Jesus and Peter and Peter being um, the first Pope. Um, I don't know why, Um, but uh, I was kind of reflecting on my brothers uh, crazily uh, electing me director and that I had no idea what I was doing. And I, uh, I'm too young. I, you know, don't know a whole bunch of things. I, uh, I'm going to make mistakes. It's going to be horrible. Um, you know, and I was just thinking, I, I want to do the Lord's will. I want to lead our community well. Um, and while I was reflecting there, um, I was thinking about Father Jack gave a, a reflection when we first got to the primacy of Peter and he mentioned that authority in the church um, is rooted in love. And that's seen here um, because Jesus asked Peter, uh, like Jessica said, you know, do you love me three times? And then he, uh, he says, you know, feed my sheep, tend my lambs, feed, feed my lambs. Um, and, and Jesus entrusts that to Peter because he knows you have a love for me. And so you can care for the church. Um, and, and so I, I just had a, a really good reflection that I don't have to be perfect, which is good because I'm not. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and no one in authority is seeing Peter is a good example too. You know, we all make mistakes. Um, but it was just good to reflect if I have that love for Jesus, um, that's the most important thing. And I mean, Jesus says it himself, uh, you know, there's two great commandments, love God and love your neighbor. And, and so, if I'm striving to, to lead the community with that love for Jesus and, uh, and that's helping all my brothers love Jesus better, all the youth love Jesus better, um, all our family and friends who support us love Jesus better, everyone who we encounter, um, then, then that's, that's what's most important. Um, and, uh, it definitely brought me um, a lot of peace, and I was very grateful to to just be able to go on the pilgrimage because, I mean, not long afterwards, found out, oh, cancer is like kind of multiple places. Look at that. Um, and uh, And if I knew that before, I probably wouldn't have been able to go. So it was... It was a great blessing. Um. All right. Good evening, everyone. <clears throat> My name is Eric Pavlik. Um, one of the privileged uh, pilgrims on this on this journey. Um, my reflection tonight kind of stems from a bit of a, a, a faith renewal, uh, a kind of a, a. I think over time, I'd, I'd gotten a little bit complacent with my role in my faith it didn't fall off the wagon by any means, but, you know, it was kind of going through the motions, um, going to church and doing the, you know, kind of checking the box. But, um, I, about 15 years, 16 years ago now, a, a bit of a renewal. And I, I've got a good friend, um, named Jimmy Adamowski to thank for that. And, uh, at that time we were deployed, uh, to Iraq and, and, uh, Jimmy is one of those guys that took the time. He's not only a good friend, but he, he's one of those guys that just, took care of everybody around him. And, and he took the time before we deployed to, to be that person to, to get trained as a Eucharistic minister and uh, be prepared to, to administer to, to the Catholics that were in the unit. Uh, I didn't think much of it until we get there and you realize there's no priests around for months, weeks at a time. And uh, it, it is very difficult, especially in those early stages, to, to have the opportunity to receive communion. Jimmy took the time to do that. Um, and then there was this one instance 
uh, where I was headed up to a, to the operations center for a briefing. You know, felt like I needed to get there. It's kind of you know beeline into that that location, and and Jimmy pulled me aside and he's like, "Hey, it, it was Sunday." And he's like, "Do you have time for you know to receive communion?" And shamefully, my first reaction was to kind of blow him off. I, I was like, "I kind of get up here. I got to get up here to take care of work." And he's like, "No, Pat, you've got time. You've got time for this. You know, that's all he had to say." So the. He and I and two others huddled in a tent, small tent in the middle of the desert. Real brief, you know, ceremony. He, he said a few prayers, administered communion. And then the most telling thing at that moment was at the end, he concluded with a prayer. And he's like, do you mind praying with me the Hail Mary? My favorite prayer is what he said. And you know, I thought about that. I was like, oh, yeah, it was no problem. But it was just, I'd never really thought about having a favorite prayer. And Jimmy's was the Hail Mary. And I think... From that time forward, I, I think I've developed a pretty close and strong relationship with Mary, and, and she's been pretty special because of that moment and then since then. Um, so my place that, that kind of resonated the most when we were there, it's really hard to pick one because the, the whole journey is just amazing. Every day, every minute, uh, you could talk about it for hours. Um, but as you can see here, this is outside the Church of the Annunciation in Nazareth, and kind of felt funny doing this because I I was like, is that sacrilege? You know, I wasn't sure if this is appropriate or not, but <laughs> there's this beautiful statue of Mary outside that, that church, and it just it just felt right to walk with her for a minute, and it ended up being, I thought, a pretty neat picture. Um, that's the church from a distance. Um, all around the courtyard outside were these beautiful artistic images of Mary from different countries and different artists around the world. Just amazing different perceptions of the Blessed Mother, and, and I found this one particularly uh, uh, beautiful. And then, then you go into the, into the church and, and, you know, what is believed to be the home that Mary, um, you know, lived with Joseph and Jesus and, and, and in and around the area where the Annunciation took place. Um, just an incredibly special place. And uh, I, maybe I didn't say it, but I, I, th I think you probably could gather that Jimmy didn't come home with us. And he would have really really loved being here and uh, that's why it was just so special to me and it just felt like ever since that moment there's been this this calling and this this relationship and an experience on the mount several experiences on the mount uh, where, where that father described earlier that that brought around about true intercession and answers to prayers uh, similar to what what Jessica experienced it, it's just an amazing relationship and and I don't want to call this a culmination because it's it, to me it's just kind of a beginning and a continuation, but just so blessed to go there and walk and be in in the in the in the place that they were two thousand years ago, and and really just ultimately bringing the gospel to to life and listening to the to the gospel tonight and and being able to relate to having been there and and experienced those things was just truly truly amazing, and it's just it's too hard to describe, and you want to just tell everybody you see how good it was. I mean, I'd almost feel bad going back a, next, a second time in place of someone else that could be there because you really, you feel like it should be mandatory. <laughs> you know, mandatory <laughs> fun for the whole church. But um, another image, uh, the altar close to, to the entrance to her home. Um, do we have two more minutes? So I'm sorry, I cheated a little bit because there, there was just too much to talk about. But this one, I felt, <laughs> I felt like this was important tonight, especially with baby Maisie here. Um, in the upper left, we had mass in, at, at Shepherd's Field, uh, just outside of Bethlehem, and it was in this cave. and And Father Jack and Deacon John were in there. They presided over mass, and and during Father Jack's homily, he spoke in a way about how Jesus came to us, or how how God manifested Himself to us as an infant. And uh, I'd never thought of it this way, but he's like, he was talking about how, you know, everyone loves a baby. Any, when a baby comes in the room, everybody wants to go be by that baby. They want to hold that baby. It, you know, whether you're old, young, it, it doesn't matter. It, it, there's just something that you're drawn to that baby. And I had that experience tonight when that, that Maisie <laughs> came in the door. You just, you, just this beautiful little infant. And, you know, we're celebrating the Mass. It's Christmas Mass. We're, we're in, it's May. It's hot. And we're in Bethlehem. And, and we're doing Christmas Mass. And, and Father talked about that during his homily. And then shortly after that, we had the opportunity to go to where he came into this world. And you've got the Church of the Nativity, uh, that tiny little door that we all had to duck our heads in to get in. It doesn't look like much of a church, but it's this old structure, very beautiful inside. 
And then we waited in line, and then we got to the point behind the altar there. You had to kind of dip down into this cave-like place. And then there was that the spot where Jesus came into this world. And it didn't look like that when we walked in because it was jam-packed and crowded and all these people around. And it kind of felt, you felt rushed and you didn't really, you know, but I kind of held back. They were, they were about to have a service and they started to clear people out and I kind of just kind of kept ducking into the corner <laughs> so I could get a picture of it with nobody around it. And uh, I'll tell you, it was just an amazing feeling because, I mean, I, you know, watched two babies come into this world and, and that, it's pretty moving and your heart's racing and you've you kind of got butterflies in your stuff. It's just this, you're overcome with joy. And I had that exact same feeling there, probably more intensely. And as I walked out of that, you, you didn't want to leave. You had to leave, but then you're walking out and you're just like, wow, I was, think about where I just was. And it's just absolutely amazing. So uh, being able to, to walk away from this experience and, and live the gospel or, or, or experience the gospels more fully and, um, and just really, hopefully, live life more fully uh, in his in his uh, the way he'd want me to. So, thank you so much.